Hello and welcome to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to use the Collider's custom renderer plugin slash API. This API is capable of doing a few key things, including changing a player's skin, overlapping a texture on top of their skin, changing a player's model, or overlaying a model on top of the player. When changing or overlaying a skin, you can do so with any texture resolution. When changing a model, there's a few things to keep in mind, such as it not bounding correctly. We'll talk about all the bugs at the end. First off, inside of mCreator, you're going to want to make sure that you add any Java models that you're going to want to overlay on top of the player, as well as adding in any texture files. Everything you add needs to be put under textures for entities, whether it's replacing the player's skin or textures for the models. All of these models will have to be added in as entities, which means you may want to stop them from spawning entirely or just despawn them when they spawn. If you're adding this plugin to an existing workspace, it's best to be safe and create a backup of your workspace before enabling the API. Do so by going to File, Export Workspace to a Shareable Zip. Afterwards, go ahead and go over to Workspace Settings, External APIs, and make sure Collider's Custom Renderer API is enabled. If this does not show up, you're likely using the wrong version of Collider's Custom Renderer, and you want to make sure you're using the most up-to-date version. Next, you need to add your additional required mod dependencies. Under additional card mods and additional dependencies, go ahead and copy and paste it from the description. It's just colliders underscore custom underscore renderer. You need this because outside of mCreator, you have to have the API inside your mods folder in order for your mods to work. And now that your assets have been added, it's time to create your procedure. So go ahead and create a procedure, call whatever you'd like, and then under event trigger, use colliders renderer event. Make sure you add the procedure at the start of the render event. Now we can start adding our conditions. Colliders recommends using item data such as item in hand, item in armor slot. According to Colliders, this is the best way to avoid desync issues on multiplayer. However, you still can use other checks such as if is event target entity sneaking. The easiest thing to change is going to be overlaying a texture or replacing your texture. You're going to do this using the change player skin too. Under your mod ID, type in your mod ID. The mod ID for my mod is Cosmetics, you can see it right up here. And now, Textures Entities, leave that alone, and then type the name of your texture. For me, this is Flash Suit or Ears. You can see them right down here. When you change a texture or overlay a texture, you can do two different things. You can either change a specific layer, such as internal or external, or you can apply the texture to both layers. Applying it to both layers is usually what you want to do if you're going to completely overlay it. What most people are going to struggle with is replacing or adding a model to an entity. It's important to note that add model to entity works with all entities, including players. If you want it to be specific to a player, use add model to player. First off, under add model entity. This is going to be the name you type in when you create your entity element. So for me, I called the others cow. And then you're going to type in model, model name. This is going to be the name that shows up under resources, model cow, capital M, lowercase everything else. Next up for the texture, it's going to be the same as with your skin So if you already made one of those, you can copy it in. And then the udder's texture is cow y. That's really all there is to it. The most complicated part of using this, if not the models, is creating the procedure. And this is because when you create your procedure, you do need to add a lot of checks. If you're completely replacing the model, you want to make sure that you're not able to overlay another skin this is where variables come in handy, and while using them may cause desync issues on multiplayer, it does make it a lot simpler to make sure that you do not overlay a texture when using a model. It also helps making sure that you're using proper precedence. Now while this plugin is great, there are a few things you should know about. First off, if you change your model entirely and you overlay a skin on top of that, there's nothing built in to stop this from happening, meaning the player's original model will still be there. This is easily fixable by putting in a catch in your procedure. Secondly, whether you change your 
skin or your model, your hand model here will not actually change, neither will its texture. Thirdly, when overlaying a model on top of yourself and shifting, that model will not properly bound to your player, meaning you'll have to create two separate models, one for when you're standing and one for when you're crouching.